we're here at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference with Dr. Roxana Carrari. We're talking to her about her research into the clearance of amyloid beta from the brain. She's a clinical neuroanatomist at Southampton University. Uh, Dr. Carrari, thank you for joining us. Thank you, um, it's an honor. Could you tell us why you are focused on the clearance of amyloid beta from the brain? Um, why is this important and what, are the, what have you discovered? Okay, so in um, Alzheimer's disease, as in other forms of dementia, there is an accumulation of waste products, not just amyloid, just different proteins, different products, either inside, the, within the cells of the brain or in between the cells of the brain. Um, and that could also happen in the walls of the blood vessels. So in order to try and understand why this is happening, we have to look at how the brain is equipped for eliminating waste. We know that the brain does not have lymphatic vessels. Now, everywhere else in the body, we have lymphatic vessels that um, eliminate fluid and waste products. And for example, if you stand for long periods of time, your ankles swell up, but you put your feet up, the fluid drains, and the ankles regain their, their, their shape and function. There are no lymphatics in the brain. So automatically, for one of the most active organs to not be equipped with the pipes that drain waste is a problem. However, um, we must eliminate waste somehow and, and, and something happens from middle age onwards where this process fails. So my first question was to answer what exactly are the pathways for eliminating waste from the brain? Now we know that, for example, amyloid is produced by the nerve cells and it's then either broken down in the brain by various enzymes, taken up by various cells called macrophages, or it crosses into the blood. But all of these systems fail with age. By a careful examination of uh, post-mortem material, we um, established that the amyloid is deposited in some tiny channels, or at least in the initial stages, in some tiny channels called basement membranes. They're about a millionth of the thickness of human hair. Now compare that with a large um, half a centimeter lymphatic vessel in, in the leg or you know a little bit smaller but still quite big in the lung. Um, so no wonder they fail in their function very early. So are these blood vessels or are they different types of ducts that would be lymph, like similar so to lymph So they vessel? are channels that are within the wall of a blood vessel okay. and weaved in between the muscle cells of the, that constrict the blood vessel. So if you imagine one of those lollies that have got red and white, yeah. if the red is the smooth muscle of the artery, the white are the basement membranes. They are the drainage routes. The problem is they're quite tortuous, they're very narrow, so they're prone to getting clogged up quite easily. And so do you think in an, with someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia that, that that's really where the problem yes, is? Yes, we've shown big, that, okay. absolutely. And we've also shown that these channels change their composition and they fail in their function. They can't eliminate waste when they're old, so with increasing age, with possession of a certain genetic background called ApoE4, um, with lack of vitamin B. And that's something we're working on at the moment with, with Donna Wilcock in uh, the University of Kentucky. Um, with uh, after immunization against amyloid beta, they simply get uh, clogged up with the excess amyloid that you're trying to eliminate by vaccination. Okay, and why is it then, if, if, if they get less efficient with age, 
Why is it that some people don't develop dementia, but they still, they're still old? They are still old, and some people, quite right, don't develop dementia. What I think is happening is that there is a threshold. And in some people, arteries will age in a more aggressive manner, and they will become stiffer and less able to pump out the amyloid along these channels. Whereas in other people, the arteries are still maintaining a minimal level of elasticity. Which brings me to prevention. Mm -hmm. So the more you look after your arteries in young, middle life, the more likely you are to be able to preserve their function of not just pumping blood into the brain, but pumping the waste out of the brain. Now, the, uh, in Southampton, we have a, um, a very reputable research group, international, uh, huge reputation on the maternal origins of adult disease. So they're looking at how the mother's diet during pregnancy and lactation influences the health of the developing embryo and baby. We looked at some of the brains of babies, baby mice, because otherwise it's not ethical, yeah. from mothers deliberately fed a high fat diet during pregnancy and lactation. The baby after birth was on a normal diet and yet their brains were not able to clear amyloid. So this is uh, a group of, uh, I repeat, young, healthy babies just born from mothers fed a high fat diet. So that, what that tells us is that the integrity of the blood vessels um, is key to be able to eliminate waste along these channels. I think that adds to a lot of research that's coming out now to say that what's good for your heart is good for your brain. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of prevention, we've come up with a lot of things that you can do that we know are, are good for your sure. heart. But um, if we're looking for treatments for someone who has developed Alzheimer's, have, has your research pointed you in any directions for, for yes. those? Yes. So. Um, if you search for a treatment, you have to search for the target that will influence that, that process. So this is an active process by which waste is eliminated along these narrow, tortuous channels. The motive force for that is provided by the contraction of the smooth muscle cells. So as a muscle cell contracts and relaxes, it will essentially pump the channel next to it. So we've already shown that if you act upon the innervation, the nerve supply of those uh, muscle cells, then you can actually influence this process. So there is a drug called silostazole that is under clinical trial in Japan and we've already demonstrated it improves the clearance. Then there is the um, another drug that appears drug target that appears to influence the chaperoning of a beta. You know, it's also all about how soluble the a beta is. Can we move it about? Can we pump it out a, a little bit with with more ease? And we think that um, compound called clusterin that also is involved in transporting the good cholesterol around the body might be helping this process. So I'm working with John Fryer in the Mayo Clinic and we're looking to see how clusterin can improve this process. Compounds such as clusterin that chaperone a beta with a little bit more ease may have a better chance in later stages where we're looking more at basically pushing a beta out by its solubility and, and, and altering its state rather than 
the contraction of the smooth muscle cells. So okay. even in a stiff, really old artery, really yeah. affected by disease, this maybe could have a, a chance. But until we do those experiments and until we provide the data, we won't be able to, to know with certainty. And it sounds like you're saying that prevention is almost better than treatment. Absolutely, I'm yeah. saying that. And actually prevention, even before birth, so the mother's responsibility starts um, from uh, pregnancy, really. Okay, thank you very much thank for joining you. us.